I have created a Raspberry Pi wildlife camera, but it has a big cat issue. Or should I say, a big dog issue. The TensorFlow model I'm using mistakes everything for a dog. A fox, a cat, a person, and some sunshine can all be mistaken for a dog. So I have to do something about it, as otherwise my wildlife camera, to put it mildly, is not very useful. I need to train my own TensorFlow object detection model using my own images and annotations. This is normally a lot of work, as it takes time to gather a decent sized dataset with good quality annotations, and it takes time to convert it to the right format. But not anymore. Intel has made an open source tool available called CVAT, which makes this work a breeze. CVAT, which is the short version of Computer Vision Annotation Tool, allows you to annotate videos and images with tracking. Or it can use object detection models to do the annotation automatically. Annotating images is hard enough, and annotating videos is even harder, but also take into account the effort of converting a dataset to the correct format, which varies depending on the machine learning framework that you decide to use. In my case, since I'm using TensorFlow, I want to convert the annotated dataset to TF records format. But no need to worry anymore. CVAT also automates this work for us. What are you waiting for? Let's get started. In order to install CVAT, the first thing you need to do is to go to the GitHub repository for the CVAT tool. You will find the link in the description. Here you have all the installation instructions that you need to follow and also you have a user guide, which will be quite useful when we start using CVAT. You can install CVAT on Linux and uh, on a Mac OS or on uh, Windows. Currently I'm on a Windows machine, so I'm going to follow the steps to install CVAT in uh, Windows 10. But I'm not going to just use Windows 10, I'm also going to use Linux inside uh, Windows, in this case Ubuntu. If you want to find out how to set this up, there are separate instructions on how to set up the Windows subsystem for Linux. You can find the link also in the installation instructions for Siva, as you can see here. And if you click on this link, you'll be able to see the steps you need to go through to install the Windows subsystem for Linux. I've already done that. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to open Ubuntu. You can also uh, install different flavors of Linux. It depends on what you prefer. First thing I'm going to check is to see if I have Git installed. As you can see, I already have Git installed. So I'm going to create a directory called CVAT and I'm going to clone the project CVAT. Now I have CVAT downloaded, so I'm going to go inside CVAT. And uh, the next thing I need is Docker. I'm going to check if I already have Docker installed. I've already installed Docker and now uh, all I need to do is to uh, start Docker. The next thing I need to do to install Siva is to uh, start it with Docker Compose. So I need to install Docker Compose. Now I have Docker Compose and I can start Sivat uh, with uh, Docker Compose at minus D. It will take some time, so you need to be patient, as it will download uh, quite a few files. I'll see you again in the future. So the installation is completed. Uh, let's see what we have running. As you can see, there are five containers. The first container is for the UI. The second container is for the backend. This is what uh, implements all the functionality behind CVAD. Then we have a database, PostgreSQL, a Redis, which is for a memory cache, and then traffic. This is the first entry point for the web server. So we need to go into port 8080. As you can see, there is a, a login prompt. We don't have an account. To create an account, you don't need to use this functionality here. We can create it directly from the command line. So you just have to execute this command. So the username. Okay, now we have an account, we can log in and uh, let's create our first project.
and I'm going to create the labels that I want to have for this project. The next step is we need to upload images and videos so that we can start labeling. Let's start a labeling task and we will start with some videos I have off of box. Start the labeling task. One hour later, I'm still labeling this, and uh, I have to say these foxes are going to be out of order because they keep popping in and popping out out of nowhere. Okay, I finally finished uh, labeling the video with uh, the foxes and now it's time to try and label a video with cats. So let's create a new task. So I can see a cat here. So the cat is disappearing which means I need to remove this bounding box. So I'm trying to do it at the exact moment. So I'm going to choose this one as the last time I put the bounding box. Now to remove the bounding box, all I have to do is click on this icon here and it will disappear. Actually, right now it's maybe it's too early. So I'm just going to go one more frame. Okay, now I can make it disappear. Perfect, right? So let's see how it looks like. Now I want to annotate some images of badgers, just in case they do show up on my garden. They haven't uh, yet, uh, as far as I'm aware. So I've already downloaded a few pictures of badgers. That's it. I still have to label a lot more videos and images, but it takes too long. I'm, I'm going to do that offline. Now that I've finished the labeling, let's try and convert all the labeled images and videos into a data set. I can import to TensorFlow. So this is where CVAT really excels. It's very straightforward to do this. You have the option to do that via the UI or via the command line interface. Uh, the UI has a limitation. As you can see here, you can only uh, export a data set per task, which means that if you use the UI, then you'll have to merge the data sets using some kind of Python script or a command line interface. You have lots of options for exporting annotations. In my case, I'm going to export my dataset as a TF record, and this is going to be used for a TensorFlow. So as you can see, it generated the, the label map. She has the annotations for, with the classes. You can see here box, cat, badger, and person. And then TF record is a format in the binary format and that contains all the images, uh, also the, the bounding boxes. Okay, so now I'm ready to go and uh, train my new TensorFlow model. I'll see you again in the next episode. And in the next episode, I'm going to show you how you can train a custom TensorFlow model for object detection to detect anything you, you might want to detect. I'll see you again soon. Happy coding!